baby, right? A baby that's learning how to walk. What if a baby after it fell two times stopped? Now we have everybody crawling around the world. Just picture that, right? <laughs> but what does a baby do? Get up. Get up. So when you're changing your habits, do the same shit. You know, we say we're, gonna eat, we're not going to eat cake. And you eat cake, fuck it. You eat cake, next time don't eat cake. That's how you do it. People think, oh, if I fucked up, fuck it, I won't do it again. Go do it again. Do the baby syndrome. They never quit. When have you seen a, a kid not walk because he didn't want to learn? Because every time he fell, he quit. Never. Okay? That's why we're here. Because I want to bring all that out of you. Because you, we all have it. I have it. You have every. There's no reason why you guys should not be dominating this industry. I'll tell you guys right now. Any person I talk to should be dominating the marketplace. End of story. Why? Because as human beings, we could do anything we want. But the problem we don't do it is because we don't understand how. We get influenced by the wrong people. We have bad habits. We have bad choices. And then we don't get shit done. And then, we, and then we're great at making excuses on why we don't do the shit we do. Just think about it. Why haven't you gone to the gym since you signed up three years ago? There's no excuses, right? It's your choices. That's all it is. And I'm not trying to put you on blast. No, but it's the truth. It is what it is. Right? I mean, it is what it is. It's just the choice, okay? So habits and choices. And create systems. You guys have systems. You have to monitor systems. For example, you say, okay, this week I want to close 10 policies. You have a goal of 10 policies. But you only talk to four people. How the hell are you going to close 10 policies? That's a system. If you say, you know what? This week I want to close 10 new, 10 new policies. Talk to 30. Don't say, oh, if I talk to 10, I'll close 10 because it's not a real number. Not everybody's going to buy from me. But if you set yourself a system that every time you talk to a person, you check it off, you're going to be accountable to yourself. You're going to have a system to catch yourself, track yourself. Okay. But if you don't have that, how are you going to know? Well, I think I talked to 12. Well, you think? So at the end of the week, you say 10, 10 transactions, you close two. And then I ask you, how many people did you talk to? Well, I think three. Well, that's why you only close two. Talk to 30. Trust me, out here, there's a lot of people. You know, if I was agent here, you know what I'll do? I'll be out there. Why? Because that's just me. But guess what? You could do it too. But you know why we don't do it? You guys know why? Comfortable and because we're going to get to it at the end of why you don't do it. And I'm going to have you guys write your why. And now Quetzal, Rocio, and Brenda are going to have your why. And the moment you don't do shit, they're going to bring out your why. So guess what? This is all put together so we all know why you do the shit you do and the shit you don't. Okay? Being very honest, you're going to be like, God damn, why would you guys bring this guy? The reason being because I'm, I'm here to tell you guys how it is. And some of you guys might feel comfortable with it, and some of you might not, because we live in, when we don't like somebody telling us the truth, trust me, I was that guy who hated the truth. But you know what? The truth helped me get out of who I thought I was. You know what? Right? So you know, you guys get that? It's so crazy. We're trapped in this world of, 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 of imaginary shit, and we got to snap out of it. You guys are in an industry that's shifting, and we're going to go into it right now, so... I don't want to get ahead of myself, but you guys have any questions on this? And, um, to measure your progress and keep, your, and keep you accountable. So the last word is accountable. You have to be accountable to yourself. You have to be accountable to yourself. What does that mean? As owners now, you guys have to create a system for accountability for them so that way when they fall off track, you catch it. You catch when they fall off track because, you know, sometimes as humans, well, how do I catch myself? Well, you'll be able to see, okay, well, you're supposed to close 10 policies. You close four. How many people you talk to? That's accountability. Be like, okay, well, let's have a sit down. Why didn't you talk to 30 people? Well, because I was on Facebook for half of the time. Okay, well, let's, let's not get on Facebook. Okay? The simple stuff is easy, also simple not to do. That, that is. Okay, you guys have any questions on that? No? All right, moving forward. I was gonna play this video, but no se va a mirar bien. All right, explanation of the workbook. That's the next page. Tengo una pregunta. Dime. Podemos escribir aquí. Ahí sí. Ahí viene esto. Excelente. So now I'm gonna to explain to you guys the workbook. Super simple. That is gonna answer your question. Yes. That's what it's for. Okay. 
The underlying words are your keywords, which we already went through, for you, the audience, to take notes. On the right side, you have your notes section. So anytime I say something that hits you, that resonates with you, put it down on your notes section, connect it. The way this works is what I say has to connect here and here. And when it does, you're gonna get ideas, you're gonna get aha moments, and you'll write them down on your notes section. That's for you. That's for you to put things together. Because I'm just gonna bring them out. You need to connect them. Does that, we're, we're clear on that? Okay. So you said underlying words are key? Keywords for you, the audience, to know. Okay, so you write in the notes section, and you fill in the blank. Remember, the notes section is to help you map out how you can implement the keywords. So it's remember, uh, number two, remember. Sec the notes section is to help you map, it's the map, out how you can implement this, the, the, word on, the keyword under two, the keywords, into your life and business. This is the section where you use your imagination and creativity. That's how this works. Because you have to use your imagination. I'm not here to say the answers, I'm here to have you figure the answers out. Are, are, we, are we, make sense? You guys probably never seen this type of, but I train this way because it hits your subconscious mind. I bring all this shit out. It works. And, and, and it works because all it is is that we don't use, we're not creative. As human beings, we died. We, our creativity has been killed because we have been programmed that we can't do anything in life. We can't be somebody in life. And it's been killed. It's been destroyed. So I'm here to bring it back up because I know all of you in here have potential. You could do whatever you want in life, you can, but how do you do that? And that's why I'm here, because I want to bring it out. It's all up to you to implement what we share, okay? Can you, can you repeat the sure. number two again? Remember, note section is to help you map out how you can implement the keywords into your life and business. This is the session to use your imagination and creativity. So it's imagination and creativity. Business and, and Im imagination and creativity. The section to use your imagination and your creativity. We're on number three. We're good. Number three. Taking notes, creating. So it's taking notes, creating notes. So it's two words on, on that one. Notes and creating. It has a blank and then it has notes. Yeah, so in that blank, put notes and creating. Yes, there we go. Thank you. And again, implementing the keywords. So the keywords that you guys are filling in, those are the words that have to resonate in your brain. Those are the words that are going to make you understand the lesson. Okay? As you see, we're not here to take a test. I'm not here to help you memorize nothing. I'm here to teach you guys the words that need to resonate in your brain to get your creativity out. That's all it is. This, the way I, this information works is not for you to memorize those keywords and talk like you're smart, okay? Now we have a visual, so that way it's easier to follow through because it was kind of hard to, a little, so. As we see, um, so we're on four. Ask yourself. Si quieres cada vez que llegamos a una página nueva, punchale todos, and then acabo. The blue is what you're gonna fill in. So it makes it easier, and then I'll explain it. So si quieres, punchale hasta que se llenen todos los lights. Al arrow. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And then you guys can fill in while I talk. Right. Y lo ya tú hablas. All right. Cool. So, number four. Ask yourself questions. How can I implement these keywords? The keywords, okay, I'm gonna give you guys an analogy. In school, you study a, a word and you remember the definition. Here is different. You're gonna get a keyword and you're gonna use your notes section 
to be creative, how to connect it to your business life, your personal life. That's the whole purpose of this workbook. So the note, se note section, make sure you're taking notes, okay? How to use the right side of your page note section. We must use the right side for creativity. It's for you to dig in your creative mind uh, how you're gonna implement the words. We, went, we were talking about habits. Once you understand a habit that you have and you document it, now you gotta implement it. For example, you wanna close 10 transactions a week, that's your goal, you have to talk to 30 people. So now you have to creatively create a game plan to talk to 30 people a day. And if you don't talk to 30, you need to check yourself. Be like, hey, I only talked to 20 and I closed six. Now next week I gotta hit, I gotta go talk to 30 so I could close 10. That's how you use the creativity side. You're gonna use the, the note section as your creativity to get the answers that you're looking for. I'm giving you the, I'm, I'm just like the, the captain on a ship. I'm, I'm moving the ship, you guys are gonna just follow me, what I say, but you're gonna create your own way of how to get there, okay? I get there, we all get there. We're, we're good with that? Yes. All right, let's move forward. Many get involved in the insurance industry and don't want to invest the time and money into specialized knowledge. What's specialized knowledge? Sales, how to sell, how to connect with humans, how to market, how to brand yourself, how to expose yourself. That's specialized knowledge. How to, if you guys write home and auto insurance, that's specialized knowledge, learning, knowing how to write home and auto policies, knowing how to write workers' comp policies, that's specialized knowledge, okay? Just because we talked about it earlier, just because you spent 52 hours to get your license does not make you an expert. End of story, I don't care what you say, I don't care, because it's not that, okay? If you look at anybody, you guys are business owners, how long have you been in the industry? 15 plus years? Yes. You spent 15 years to figure this out, okay? That's when you're an expert. But just because you got your pre-licensing class for 52 hours, you're not an expert, okay? So, specialized knowledge. Training is a must in order to succeed. But since additional training is optional, okay, that's why the majority don't take the time to invest in specialized training. I asked you guys earlier, how many of you guys spend an hour a week to better yourself in what you do? And again, it was not a question to make you feel bad. It was a question of sincerity. You're not. You're not spending time in the career you're in. You know how much money you can make in this industry? Do you guys know how much money? Unlimited. You wanna make a million dollars? You can make a million dollars. You wanna make a hundred million dollars? You can make a hundred million dollars. The illegal immigrants from Mexico. They came to this country and gave me a good life. So it's now my turn to give it back, but I'm here to disrupt this industry. And, and as Latinos, we're the ones that get less, less recognition because we only do enough to get through the day. And I'm here to change that shit. I'm telling you guys, mark my words. Me and now we're talking about some ideas we're gonna work. I have a team that works with me in, in, in my Instagram. I have a team in, in Arizona that works with me. We're gonna take this shit nationwide. So what I'm sharing with you guys, you guys are gonna see it in five years in an arena of 10,000 insurance agents. Trust me, you guys are gonna see that. Why? Because this crazy guy, just like you, at 19 years old, made 120 grand. I'm gonna fill up a stadium in Las Vegas. I already told him that mark your calendar in five years, you guys will be in my, at my event in Las Vegas with 10,000 agents and agency owners in Las Vegas getting trained by the people that I bring to train you guys in every line of insurance. So now, do you guys want to make history, or you guys just want to be average? History. Let's make history. Why? Because that's why I'm here. I could have said no to Quetzal. I could have said no to Rocio and Brenda. But I'm here because I want to make a difference. It doesn't matter if you have five agents. It doesn't matter if you have 100 agents. The information I share is the same information that I just shared with Nationwide. Nationwide is a multi-billion dollar company. They hire me to train their agents. And I'm sharing you guys the same information I share with them. Same. I'm the one that trains them. So guess what? I'm the same person that I'm at their office training them. I'm training you guys. 
So that's a great point because it's not about the 120 though. It's yeah. about your drive and that you got out of your comfort zone and you went to go make shit happen. That's the difference. Now, when you get to a slide, okay, thank you, that I'm gonna talk to you guys about your, who you are. And there's gonna be words in there that I threw in there that I can't change you, Quetzal can't change you, Rocio Brenda can't change you. You only could change yourself, and we're gonna talk about it. All right, let's move forward. That was a great analogy. Why do you think there's 97? You guys know the 97 three rule? Only 3% of people become successful. So if you walk through your day and you talk to 100 people, only three people are actually doing bigger things in life, okay? While the others never achieve their full potential. Isn't that mind blowing? Only 3% of people achieve their dreams and goals. Only 3%. Do you guys see that number, how crazy it is? So out of 100 people you come across every day, only three are actually genuinely successful. The other 97% are just, just, just going by, just walking through the day without any clue of how much potential they have and they're not taking it to their full potential. Who taught us, go to school, Get good grades, the better grades, the better job, the more money. Who taught us this? How many of us think that being smart is gonna make you more money? Yeah, it's not true. Being smart doesn't mean shit. It's about how you implement the real knowledge. This is real knowledge, this is real power. Not knowing how to do a calculation of calculus or knowing chemistry, that does not make you successful. And the reason I bring this up is because I'm moving into the next thing, the way we're programmed. We're programmed to think that you being smart, you're gonna be successful, you're not. Okay, what develops success is skill set. We talked about it, you guys have a skill set on, on quoting products, carriers, that's a skill set. You already have some skill set to win. Now I'm gonna share with you guys why we don't win. And then we're gonna identify why you're not winning. Okay, and again, this is not personal, this is just the truth, these are the facts. Okay, so you guys have any question on this? And the reason I bring this up is because it blows my mind that every single one of us had dreams. When we were kids, growing up, we all said we wanted to be astronauts, doctors, careers that everybody told us we were crazy. I wanted to be an astronaut when I was growing up. You know what my parents said? You're fucking crazy, that's, men, that's, that's mental. You're not gonna be an astronaut. And guess what, I believed it. That's the truth about our lives. You guys listen to friends, I'll, bet, I'll guarantee you guys being in this industry, when you first got involved, how many people told you you're, you're crazy? No vas, a, no vas a durar. What's the word the Latinos use? No vas a durar, right? And what does that do to your mind? Programs it. it programs and you believe it. Then you'll be like, well, see, you know, I was meant to be something else. And that's why I'm here, because I know all you guys have dreams. We all have dreams, but they've been shattered and they've been ridiculed. They made fun of us because we wanted to do the things that we wanted to do. Quetzal did music, I did music. So interesting when we met, I did albums the same time he did albums. I did music because somebody told me I could not do music. And you know what I did? I went and signed a contract and I did five albums. When somebody told me I could never sing and I never record, do I wanna continue that career path? No, because I wanted to see how it was like. And I did it. Right? We we're talking about music. He knows the same people I know from music from back in the days. And it's crazy, and I share that story because that's how this world works. You have to go do it. The three percenters, we go do it. Regardless if it's raining, regardless if it's, if, if, if it's a shitty day. Like right now, I gotta call my attorney on our break time. It's a shitty day for me already. But guess what? I'm here, and I'm focused, and I'm talking to you guys. I could've said, you know what, fuck this, I gotta go. Right? No, I'm, you guys don't even know I'm dealing with that but that's just my attitude. That's why I'm a three percenter. So now you gotta shift your mindset and be a three percent. All of us could change this, all of us, but it takes work, it takes implementation, okay? Let's move forward. 
We're going to spend 12,000 hours on education from kindergarten to 12th grade. And we will be taught the same subject, subjects over and over. And there's a reason I put this slide on all my trainings. Because we need to shift out of the mindset that we have to be smart and that we need education to become successful. And I'm opposing to that. And I'm actually going to create a video soon in Spanish sharing with you guys how I teach my kids to leverage in school. My kids go to school and are not smart, but I've taught them how to leverage in school, how to delegate, how to become entrepreneurs in school while they get good grades and focus on what they love. And you guys will be seeing it in the next few months. Right, Anand? We're going to gonna record it. So, And the reason I say that is because I'm against this. I went to school. I got a degree in Cal Poly Pomona in business. If you ask me what I learned in school, I didn't learn shit. <laughs> What I, what I learned on the streets and in life skills is what I'm teaching you guys. There's not one thing on, on this training today that comes from my college degree. Okay? Nos ha programado. Que, que ellos pelean, uno de ellos que no le importaba terminar la high school y decía, y dice que es que la escuela es, o sea, no, no le va a servir para nada, no. que está perdiendo el tiempo. Y otro punto, estamos platicando Hernán y yo. Tengo tres, tres niños, tengo uno de 13, 14 y 15 años, ¿ok? Y los tres tienen su pasión. El más grande es, es uh, hace teatro, uh, como te había comentado, canta. El mediano juega golf. Eh, mi hijo mediano tiene problemas de aprendizaje. Okay? Él tiene learning disability with ADHD. So él no tiene clases normales. Y mi hijo más pequeño juega béisbol. Pero yo les he enseñado a ellos. When you go to school, delegate. Okay? You guys, y yo sé que lo, y lo voy a decir ahorita porque se van a decir, what the fuck? Yo les digo, júntense con los más inteligentes y que les hagan la tarea. No, pues escuchen mi punto para que ellos se enfoquen en lo que en realidad les son apasionados. Mi hijo canta este fin de semana, hizo el show Frozen este, en teatro y él se enfoca en lo que él ama y está apasionado. Cuando llega la, de la casa, tiene sus amigos que le hacen su tarea, se la mandan, le pone su nombre y la entrega. Mi señora, mi esposa, se encabronó conmigo cuando yo le dije, le digo, ¿sabes cómo me gradué de la universidad? Yo me juntaba con todos los chinos inteligentes y me hacían toda la tarea. Y yo, ¿sabes lo que hacía? Me iba y vendía computadoras para salir adelante. ¿Hacías lo que te gustaba? Cada, cada quien tiene un don en este mundo. Todos. Y que despertar ese don. Correcto. Mi hijo mediano tiene clases, you know, special ed, juega golf. Y, y siempre le decían que él no iba a ser un buen, que no iba a poder jugar golf por su capacidad, su, su incapacidad que tiene. E hizo trial para el freshman, uh, freshman hizo, hizo trials para el golf team la semana pasada y fue el único freshman que entró al equipo. Y yo les digo estas historias porque la gente dice, no, pues que, es que tú, no. Yo les enseño lo que tienen que entender para que salgan adelante. ¿Sí me explico? Ahorita mi hijo juega béisbol, está en San Diego, todo este fin de semana estuve en San Diego. Yo me vine para acá para estar con ustedes. Él se quedó con mi, mi esposa, mis hijos están allá en San Diego jugando béisbol. Está jugando con una organización de béisbol, estamos platicando Hernán y yo, que el dueño de la organización me, me habló el sábado, me dice, hey, ¿puedes tu hijo jugar con otro equipo? Que pertenece a un equipo y lo mandó llamar a otro equipo y... Salió el director de Las Vegas y me dice, ¿sabes qué, qué, qué es lo que le enseñas a tu hijo? Le enseño que no, no se estrese por la pinche tarea, que juegue béisbol. Y toda la gente me critica, pero un día van a ver a mi hijo jugando en las ligas mayores, van a ver, jugar, a ver a mi hijo jugando en el PGA Golf y van a ver a mi hijo ser a, a teatro o lo que sea. ¿Por qué? Porque yo les enseño lo opuesto a eso. ¿Para qué? Yo, llegaban todos estresados y la chingada, ¿para qué se estresan? Y primeramente mi señora no me apoyaba, me dice, estás loco, ¿no? Le digo, es que yo esto lo hice en la, en la universidad, esto lo entendí en la universidad. Me recibí y yo mientras me estaba enfocando en entender las ventas, cómo vender, cómo generar de ingreso, cómo hacer. ¿Sí me explico? Y lo hice. Y alguien más me hacía la tarea. 
Entonces, yo sé que... Entonces, entonces el punto es este, que esto va, esto va a crear controversia. Y crea controversia porque estamos programados que hay que entender estas materias. Sí, el merc la mercadotecnia y lo que hemos, disculpa la palabra, pero es la correcta, lo que hemos mamado durante 30 años, sí. que es las novelas en México, uh -huh. nuestros padres que nos dijeron, tú te, te, tú el licenciado. te tienes que casar con un hombre de bien, de rico, y vivir tu vida de princesa, que dicen las novelas. Y tú, hombre, tienes que graduarte y, y ya te van a dar un trabajo donde vas Chingo. a ser muy millonario y sí. eso no es cierto. No es cierto. Y menos ahorita en este tiempo. No, ahorita menos. El título ese no vale absolutamente Basur. tres Basur. Entonces, es controversial es y se los digo porque vamos a hacer un video con estos puntos y yo sé que va a ser muy controversial. Ya estamos platicando hace rato, Erna. Pero ya miramos ahorita la reacción fue mixta pero todos al último aceptamos que es la realidad. Entonces, yo no les estoy enseñando a mis hijos que roben, no les estoy enseñando que hagan cosas que no deben. Eh, el concepto de que alguien más haga tu trabajo es parte de ser empresario, porque si tú eres empresario, contratas gente que haga tu trabajo. Entonces, ahí yo les estoy enseñando cómo ser empresario. Júntate con los mejores estudiantes que hagan tu trabajo. Y ellos, y ellos al final de cuentas están ejercitando lo que ellos quieren, claro. que es su mente para ser Correcto. gente graduada y otros y otro tipo de todo el mundo te ha puesto que tiramos un grupo de mil personas y todos hasta me van a mandar la madre. Pero no importa, porque funciona. A mí ¿Qué me... vas a hacer cuando los pongan a hacer un examen? Porque no importa, porque el examen te muestra cómo memorizarte las cosas. Una memoria, si tú te memorizas, yo ahorita por eso lo que estoy pongo aquí no es para que se lo memoricen, para que lo entiendan. La memoria, it's called memorization. A test prepares you to memorize things. Lee esto, this is the word, give me the definition. It's not skill set. El examen es de sexto año de primaria, porque todo nos hacía memorizar. It's memorization. And you know what comes, and, and, and that's a great point, but it's not, memorization does not make you successful. It's your hard work and your skill set. Because you can memorize science. What the fuck do you need science for? Science, unless you're going to work for NASA, then if that's your dream, yes, yes, study that. But if it's not, it's like math. I had calculus in high school. What the fuck do I need calculus for? <laughs> I don't remember shit. Pero es que hay que ser realistas. ¿Sí me explico? Yo, personalmente, calculus, si me hace una pinche un, uh, equation de, I don't know what the fuck to do with it, do I need it? No, because I'm not an engineer. I'm a, now, if you're following that trend to be an engineer, yes, study that. If you want to be a doctor, study science. That's, that's the right way. But I'm saying if you're in this realm of insurance, what the fuck do you need to memorize? How many of you guys memorize everything on the test for the 52 hours? We all memorize it for the test, right? Mm -hmm. After that, you don't remember shit, right? If you go take the test right now, you'll fail it. Just memorize the keywords. So, that's the problem. They're teaching us how to take tests. Yeah. They're not teaching us how to develop skill set. I'm teaching my kids to develop skill set. Let somebody do the work for you that stresses you the fuck out. My kid is my kid's not gonna go get a job because he's following his dream. I don't tell him to be a baseball player. I don't tell my son to play golf. I don't tell my son to act and do theater. That's their choice. That's what they've been doing since they were five. They're following their dream. So the harder they, the more time they have to follow their dream, the better they're gonna get. The skill set's gonna evolve. And now my son's 13 years old. I already got an offer for a university to pay a full ride. This is 13 years old. I got an email from one of the, the head coach of uh, University of Virginia. He's only 13. When he's 17, 18, he's gonna have MLB scouts looking at him play baseball. My son will have PGA golf um, people looking at him because they don't have to worry about the shit that stresses them out.